to how to kick the sugar habit webinar um so good to have you guys on with me here um so before we get started i, I just let's do a bit of an opener a bit of an open share um so if you want to just type in that chat window you know hi my name is whatever um introduce yourselves and then share your favorite sweet treat you know what what uh treat what sweet treat do you like best personally it's ice cream for me i used to be a big ice cream fan um so and tell us both the good and the bad of um how sugar makes you feel and you know what do you notice happens when you eat sugar hey travis thanks buddy <laughs> so yeah ice cream is my favorite makes me feel good <laughs> So I see you guys, some guys chatting. I mean, typing this. I'll just wait a few seconds. Cornettos. Oh, yes. Nothing like a good Cornetto ice cream. Gummies. Wow. Okay. Anybody like hard sweets? I used to like hard candy. And how does it make you feel afterwards after you've had it? Good. <laughs> That's why we have it, right? That's why we have sugar. Oh, love it. Yeah. Sometimes, um, yeah, so it makes me feel good for a while, and then afterwards I have a bit of a crash. Snickers bars, guilty pleasure for sure. I used to have them when I used to work in, uh, not construction, but um, DIY. I was working for a, a builder, and we used to have Snickers bars every every lunchtime. So we'll get into that in a minute. So, so great to have you guys. Thanks for uh, chatting there in the window, and and please just keep the chat going. I'm happy to uh, see you guys chatting in the in the in the chat window there. Uh, let's keep the conversation going. This is, this is live, so it's all good. Okay, so I'm gonna crack on here. Um, so just welcome to uh, this. I'll just show that slide already. Sorry, but there we go. Um, so here we go. This is my. I'll just introduce myself. Um, this is my wife. Uh, Esther and me and my two girls and my two boys. So we are truly blessed. That's us on a holiday uh, in Norfolk last year. Um, so my wife's a teacher and um, my kids are super cool because um, we try hard. Uh, we try hard to be good parents, but you know, it's always a challenge to be consistent and good parents, as I'm sure you guys know. So um, excuse the, the the vanity, yeah, but not, not really. Um, uh, this is my dad laid a challenge to me at 17 years old and he said when I was 40 I would look like him with a bit of a beer belly and I wouldn't always have my muscles but he was almost right um, so I'll just show you I'll just tell you a bit of a story about myself um, I was very active throughout my childhood and into my 20s I did gymnastics I rode motocross bikes I did weight training I played rugby I surfed for over 12 years um, and it kept me pretty fit so my passion for healthy ways of living started in my 20s where I fermented my own milk. I don't know if anyone's ever done that. Anybody done something crazy like that, like fermenting milk and making whey? And so I did that so I could make sauerkraut and soak my grains. And I was fully into healthy eating and living in my, in my 20s. I, you know, I was a bit of a nerd, like a food nerd. Anybody else like that out there? So let me know in the chat window. So my, my friends used to tease me when we went out. They were like trying to entice me to have uh, to eat something bad, like a crisp or a sweet or something. Um, so they, you know, how 20 year olds, sometimes they want to tease each other. So they would always tease me about, about that. It was going well. And so I got married, um, at 33 and, and I moved to England and I stalled. I didn't do any exercise, no fitness training or other sports. Um, so before that I was living in South Africa. Um, so I became lethargic unmotivated. and I started overeating, you know, that feeling where you have to like loosen the belt and how your stomach feels bloated. So usually uh, within an hour and a half after breakfast, I would be reaching for a cookie or a, or a chocolate bar or something to give me that mid-morning boost. And when lunch came, I, I would eat a pie or a sandwich or something from the from the shops and also have another chocolate bar after that. So I, I, I'm the kind of person who likes to have a sweet treat after, after our meals. And later on, we'll talk about that. Um, so my afternoons were usually like a crash fest. You know, 3 p.m. came along. I was sluggish. I hardly drank any water. You know, I didn't drink much water because I try to avoid going to the toilet every hour. Um, and you can ask anyone, I was a sucker for ice cream. You know, seconds and thirds for me every time. 
Um, but to be fair on myself, this was the time in my life when I devoted myself as a dad. You know, as long as I can remember, I wanted four kids. And when my first child came, I was fully involved. You know, I gave up me for seven years and I focused on them. Um, is anybody out there can relate to that? I'm sure you guys can. So um, in 2017, I started a new job in Cambridge uh, and I joined a gym after many years away from, you know, physical exercise. So it was the start of my turning back to health and wellness. And my muscle tone started to improve. I started to feel okay again about my body. And it wasn't until 2019 in January, or it might have been December 2018, when I was that's sick and tired of being sick. You know, every Christmas I'd have a cold or some like sinuses and I would just be ill quite a lot. So I decided to find out a better way to eat and live. And I found one thing called the Wim Hof breathing technique. Anybody, does anybody do Wim, Wim Hof breathing technique? Just let me know. Uh, just type it up there in the chat window or any kind of other breathing techniques. Um, be interesting to see if you guys do that. Um, I also started listening to podcasts like London Real, Impact Theory. Lewis Howes. So I wonder what you guys listen to as well. Maybe you've got uh, your favorite your favorite podcast. Um, I started meditating and doing uh, stretching. Yes, yeah, so Andrea, Wim Hof breathing is, is a bit like um, yoga breathing in a way. So it just helps you to be at a calm state um, and to focus and uh, have that con uh, commitment as what Wim Hof would call it. So it's really good. I encourage anybody to try it out. Um, so I was doing, yeah, you know, stretching, body weight training and that. And then by September, 2019, when I took the photo of me in that previous slide, I was back on form and I'd kicked the desire for sugar. So I'd kicked the sugar habits. And this was also thanks to the training I'd undertaken with the health coach Institute. And it's uh, where this training has helped me to develop, um, the 90 day total transformation program. Okay. So this program was made to teach people how to kick the sugar habit without giving up sweetness. At first it was for a group of three friends and then it expanded to 10. And these people have successfully kicked sugar and experienced a total transformation using these exact steps that I'm gonna teach you today. So now it's my goal to help you connect the dots and see exactly how you can do this too, no matter how far off the track you've fallen. Right, so you are in the right place if you're wondering why you crave sugar at certain times, you're done reinventing the wheel and you want someone to tell you what works and what doesn't for real. And you want to discover what is keeping you stuck so you can get unstuck, okay? And um, you're ready to finally get the sugar and food thing handled so you can allow your best self to shine. So if this describes you, then you're exactly in the right place. In fact, if this is you, it's no accident that we're together because Today, I'm going to show you uh, how to kick the sugar habit without giving up sweetness so you can experience a total transformation that gives you your best body, your best mood, and your best life ever. So as we have a limited, a limited time together, uh, I'm going to teach you as much as I can about our topic today. Um, and then I promise before we finish, I'll show you how to take it further if you want to. So let's jump right in. So the three main challenges that, that all my clients and most people have when they want to kick sugar, All right? So challenge number one, the first challenge is wondering why the heck would they have sugar cravings in the first place? I mean, why those sugar cravings feel out of control and what to do about it? So let's solve that mystery now, shall we? Let's uh, talk about why sugar becomes a craving for us in the first place. Traditional nutritionists think of food in calories and grams of fat. And as a health coach, that is only one way I look at food. The other way is something really cool. And the concept is called the polarity of food. What does that mean? So if you guys look in your, uh, there's something called the, there's the AV pod, by the way, which is, which is my video. You can also push that to the side. And there's also called the event board, which I believe I've shared a file with you guys on the event board. If you want to check it out, it's called the polarity of food but you don't have to. Um, I'm going to show you that slide in just a minute. So let's get to that now. So the concept of uh, polarity is pretty simple. Uh, it's based in, on the principle that everything has two polarities or extremes. For example, hot and cold are, are extremes of the pole called temperature. And it's the same way with every apparent opposite, hard and soft, noisy and quiet, light and dark, good and bad, love and fear. So when you find one thing 
you'll also find the potential for its opposite. So to look at the world through the lens of polarity is to look at it in pairs, dark, light, night, day, yin, yang, male, female. So how does this concept apply to food? First, we want to consider that food is more than simply fuel. Okay? It has energetic qualities that are beyond the science and mechanics of calories, fat grams, and nutrient values. For example, leafy greens grow upward so that they have a lifting energy, whereas root vegetables like potatoes or squash grow deep in the ground so they have a grounding energy. So what does that polarity of food look like? Where does the inherent energetic quality of different fruits fall on the spectrum? And how might this polarity in your food actually be creating your cravings? So on the right, on the slide, you'll see on the top, there's the, the bliss, the expansive bliss. The foods that represent this energy are uh, represented in alcohol, caffeine, sugar, dairy, and to some extent fruit. Now, I'm not saying that those foods are bad. Of course, not, not all of them are bad. Um, I have caffeine in my coffee every morning. Um, the energy of these foods make you feel light, relaxed, happy, blissful. But when you eat too many bliss foods, you start to feel a bit spacey, maybe even a little forgetful. Then uh, on the other extreme is the contracted tension foods. These foods are contracting versus expansive. Examples of these um, foods are salt, eggs, and red meat. So again, there's not, we're not talking about good and bad foods here. We're just talking about the foods that make you feel uh, in different ways. These are the kind of food that put meat on your bones, okay? They make you feel grounded, focused, but when you eat too many, you start to feel tight, agitated, perhaps even angry. So that's all fine and good, but how do, do the two extremes of the polarity of food, the expansive bliss and the contract attention relate to sugar cravings? Right, I'm glad you asked. So if life is a system of opposites and your body is always trying to balance itself out, what do you think happens if you're having too many contracted foods like salt and meat and eggs what do you what do you think your body might start craving to balance itself out it'll crave the opposite of contracted foods it'll crave sweet expansive bliss foods so do you find that if you have something like salty you know potato chips uh, that you have maybe you crave something sweet afterwards that's a challenge if we have too many contracted foods we'll crave the expansive so, so what many people don't realize, and I didn't realize this myself either, is that we're oftentimes creating our cravings unknowingly. Cool, right? You can even look at it at activities in your life that, through the lens of the polarity of expansive and contractive. Uh, there are things that happen in your life that are a little more contractive, um, they create more tension, and then there are things that are more expansive, they create more relaxation. Examples of contractive activities are running, or working too much, partying, staying up late, stress, something we all know about. And when you have too many contractive activities, you're going to crave more expensive foods because you need relaxation. So if you don't allow yourself to relax, then you'll find yourself binging on wine, chocolate, bread, desserts, coffee, whatever it may be. Okay. And for me, that's like a hard day at work and Sometimes I crave a beer afterwards. Expensive. That's the alcohol. So your body is begging for a break, like sleep, reading, meditation, walking, or taking a bath. So those things are expensive. If you're driving in awful traffic or your child was a nightmare or you had a really stressful day at work, what are you going to crave, right? Sweets or a gin and tonic or a beer like me, expensive foods. You know, that craving is your body trying to balance itself out again. So when I'm working with clients to deconstruct their cravings, we look at not just the foods they're eating, but also their lifestyle. All right, challenge number two. Remember, there's three challenges. <clears throat> the second challenge around kicking the sugar habit that no one wants to do to do it because, you know, no one wants to, to actually kick the sugar habit because it feels so good, right? And we said that in the beginning, we were chatting about, you know, about all the stuff that we like to eat and it makes us feel good. So let's take a quick look at what's happening in the body uh, when we eat sugar and why we experience that awesome sugar high. Okay. So products that contain a lot of sugar usually don't contain lots of fiber, fat, or protein. So fiber, fat, and protein slow down sugar absorption. So when those nutrients aren't present, 
the blood sugar shoots up really fast, like to the top of a roller coaster. Now, at the top of the roller coaster, your, your brain is alerted, right? So it's like, bing, your brain uses about 50% of your blood sugar at any given time. So any drastic rise or fall in your blood sugar levels cause your brain to flip out. So when your blood sugar spikes up, your brain and your body aren't happy. So you're, to your body, this is like an emergency, right? So what, your, what does your body do? Your, your pancreas actually secretes hormone insulin. So it's the hormone called insulin to bring your blood sugar back down again to a normal level. But here's the problem, okay? So we've spent a lifetime eating a lot of sugar and processed foods. I mean, we grew up in the 80s. Um, and that was popular then. So insulin does its job too well. So when, when insulin is sent out, it doesn't just <clears throat> bring your body and your blood sugar back down into balance. You know, there's often too much insulin secreted and then your blood sugar dips too low. All right. And, and that's when um, the blood sugar crash. You, that, that's the feel you get after the sugar high. That kind of shaky, spaced out, comfortable feeling. You know, type an amen there in the chat box if, he's, if you know what I'm talking about. I know I've certainly felt that. Um, slide 22. Sorry, I want to say that. I'm reading my own notes here. So go on to there. There we are. So so if you've had a, a blood sugar crash, now what does your body crave when you're down there in the middle of the nasty crash? More sugar. Thanks, David. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And what happens to our blood sugar when we eat the sugar again? You know, it goes up back to the top of the roller coaster. And so the up and down cycle continues. I mean, as you guys have experienced that, right? So how does it feel? You know, this is one of the reasons we start eating sugar and we quite literally can't stop and crave it constantly. So because your body is actually trying to find blood sugar balance, you know, so the, the sugar craving is your body's way of saying it needs something specific to restore this balance. The easiest and most convenient food to restore blood sugar balance when your blood sugar is really low is sugar. However, if we keep eating sugar, we will stay on the crazy craving roller coaster. And that roller coaster affects your mood, causes weight gain, can lead to serious diseases like adult onset diabetes. And there's a little more to the story. So after the hormone insulin is sent out, to take excess sugar out of the bloodstream, it has three places it can take the sugar. Number one, your brain. Number two, your blood cells. And number three, your muscles. Now, if all those receptors are full because, I mean, you've been eating a lot of sugar already, where does the excess sugar go? Yep, right onto the hips. <laughs> the excess sugar turns into fat. So now there's yet another not so thrilling thing. When your body is producing insulin to bring you down from the sugar high, it can't produce what's called glucagon. Now, glucagon is very important, especially if you're trying to shed excess weight because it's the hormone that takes fat out of storage to be burned, right? So if you're eating sugar, not only are you probably storing it, some of it as fat, you also can't release fat to be burned because sugar blocks glucagon production and fat burning. And that's a bummer, okay? And here's something else I want you to consider. These days, many health conscious people know their blood sugar levels go up and down on, on a sugar induced high, but they often don't realize the emotional roller coaster ride that accompanies this. We feel happy and energetic for a while, and then suddenly, unexplainably, we find ourselves arguing with a friend or a lover and beating ourselves up in our mind. So our moods are all over the place. Yeah, has anybody experienced that? I think. Sometimes we don't realize <laughs> what's actually driving that. And it might just be uh, this blood sugar is going all over the place. So I put my hand up. It's probably me as well. So the third and final challenge with sugar that I experienced myself and I noticed with my clients is that when you're not happy with an area of your life, maybe like your career, um, your relationships, your finances, your workouts, your sex life, your family, where you live, the winter weather. It's sometimes so much easier to reach for sugar than deal with what's really going on. And I, and I totally get that. I mean, a craving may seem like a pain in the butt, but what if cravings 
are a messenger to help you step into the best version of who you are. That would be pretty amazing. Okay, you didn't come here just for problems, but you came here for solutions, right? Yeah, so let's look at how to get started on the sugar, on kicking the sugar habit without starving, right? Who wants to stop? Not me, all right? Without giving up sweetness, even if you've never done it before. So how do we, how do we start on this? So you don't have to write this down. I've, I've written them all down for you on a PDF that you can print out later, and I'll show you uh, when, when you'll get that in, in a bit, okay? There are seven solutions to sugar cravings on that PDF, and I'm going to read them out to you now. So you can just listen, take these in, and, and know it's all written down for you. So here's the solutions, guys. Number one is check your bevies. So it sounds crazy, but sometimes sweet cravings are a sign of dehydration. So down a glass of water. If you can, wait five minutes if you've got the patience and see if you still um, have the same cravings. Also, too much caffeine mimics a blood sugar crash. So you're high for a bit, but then you come crashing down again and, and you crave sugar, of course. Number two, uh, this is I find this one really um, intriguing because it's so true for me. So satisfy your sweet tooth with sweet veggies, fruit and spices. Maybe type in the chat window there, what's your favorite healthy, uh, nice thing to eat? So I, mine, mine's cinnamon. So I don't know if you guys like that. I love cinnamon. Um, and also my wife says she loves to have um, actually all of, yeah, I want to talk about that in point number seven, actually. She likes um, something like really tantalizing for the tongue. So let's hear, let's hear what you guys got uh, that you guys like. Apple. Yes, apple's a good one. It's a good little uh, sweet treat. Blueberries. Love blueberries. The polyphenols in blueberries are amazing. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Andrea. <clears throat> so, so don't hold out on your taste buds. Give them uh, nice food, tasty food. You know, add uh, naturally sweet foods and spices to your diet like squash, yams, carrots, beets, berries, figs, apples, cinnamon, coriander, nutmeg. Oh, I love nutmeg. Cloves and cardamom. Oh, dark chocolate. Yes, David. I love dark chocolate. In fact, there's a there's an English company called Fire Tree, which you should check out. Fire Tree chocolate in Peterborough. Amazing chocolate. They get it from these remote islands in Philippines somewhere. It's amazing. In moderation, yes. Okay. So uh, number three is sleep. So one of the solutions for for blood uh, for kicking the sugar habit is sleep. For many of us, this is easier said than done. But if you're constantly tired, your body is going to look for energy, usually in the form of sugar or caffeine so power down an hour earlier than usual and notice how your cravings disappear so i, I actually operate pretty well with six and a half hours of sleep or sometimes less uh, i don't know how you guys if most people sounds like they need seven or eight hours um but actually what i heard this is a bit off the track um but meditation people who meditate actually require less sleep than if you guys have ever heard that before so um yeah so just type in the chat window there how many hours of sleep you get. So for me, I reckon I could do six hours. So Kurt says seven and a half with meditation. Brilliant. David, nine hours. <laughs> Andrea, love that. Six to seven. Keeping it. And Lauren, eight. Yes. So this it's roughly between six and nine, I suppose, around about there. Excellent. Um, yeah, so it does depend on the day. If it's a really stressful day, you might need more, more sleep. Uh, all right, number four, check your protein. Um, I'm not too sure if there's any vegetarians or vegans with us, but obviously this is m more with people who eat uh, meat, uh, animal protein as well. So it's a fun, cool fact. Watch how much protein and what kind of protein. Uh, Andrew, you're vegan, okay. Um, what kind of protein you're eating, especially animal protein. Eating too little animal protein can lead to massive sweet cravings. Eating too much animal protein can lead to sweet uh craving so too little or too much so when i work with clients we find just the right sweet pot spot for protein intake so they feel satisfied um so andrea what's your main uh protein that you have anyway um as, as a vegan it's um it's always a bit tough to find a, a suitable nuts and pulses yes yeah i love nuts nut butter i love a bit of nut butter cashew almonds 
Excellent. Cashew butter. Yes. Uh, so for those who like cashew butter, you should check out uh, Dave Asprey's uh, chop, uh, fridge, fridge fudge um, recipe on Dave Asprey's blog. It's cashew butter, cocoa, uh, collagen, bovine collagen, and, and you can put xylitol in there. Um, really nice. So really healthy as well. <clears throat> right. Number. So we go. Number. Where did I get out to? Number five. <clears throat> so number five is sniff out the low fat and fat free foods. So when manufacturers take out <clears throat> the fat out of foods, what what do they put in? They put in sugar. All right. So just check that out. Be, be aware of that. Uh, number six, move yourself. So movement is another kind of food for your body. It releases stress, makes you feel great and look great. And when you don't get enough, your body starts to look for other ways to blow off steam, like binging on Snickers. So that's one thing. So number seven, um, this is where I want to get your input. So number seven is like a post meal ritual. Um, I've actually recently <laughs> every, after every meal now I have a, 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 a spoon of peanut butter. So I don't know if it's, it's probably peanut butter is not the best butter out there, but, um, it's the cheaper one. So I just have like, I used to have like a cook, like a biscuit or a cookie after my meal, something sweet. But I found that if I just have that ritual uh, of, of having peanut butter afterwards, then I'm less likely to want to go for a sweet treat. So what do you guys do? Is there something um, that you guys do that you've already done? That's, that's a good post meal ritual. Or can you just think of something new now? Like what, what would you do? Um, my wife Esther reckons that you should have something like um, strong tasting uh, Cup of tea, yeah, that's good. Um, just to fill yourself up, and make sure that you that you're there. Oh, and David, you have uh, seventy percent dark chocolate, yeah. So that that is good because that's a little bit sweet. Plus, dark chocolate is really healthy for you as well. So, well, you know, you guys can think of it yourself. So, think of a, a, a post meal ritual that uh, you do instead of going for something like ice cream or a sticky toffee pudding or whatever it may be right thanks for your input so um now i'm going to tell you how to turn today's you immediately useful information into lasting transformation so you know who here feels 100 percent confident that they could walk away from this talk kick sugar once and for all and be done with it well you know it's it's that's because we actually left out three ingredients that's going to pull this all together and without these three ingredients um we stay in the same patterns and repeat the same old behaviors that keep us stuck. Um, some of us do really well for a little while. You know, we, we get some new information, we renew our commitment, we get all psyched up to follow through. We take consistent action for a week or two. We convince ourselves that this time is gonna be different. And then what, what happens? Our motivation fizzles out, we fall off track. How many people know what to do, but we don't always do it? Yeah, that's most of us. And that's because knowing isn't enough. It's not what motivates us to action. I mean, we're suffering from a high fact diet. We've got lots of theory, but we're not putting it into practice. So the, the three ingredients that will bring us all together are the right system, the right support, and, and the right account, uh, accountability. So we've got information. You don't need more information. What we do need is to make this time different. You know, to, to make this time different, we need someone to encourage our progress, someone to kick us in the butt when we make poor choices. And since none of you enthusiastically are ready to get off the sugar roller coaster on your own, I'd like to invite you guys to a free initial total body transformation breakthrough session. So it's a 45 minute private consultation where we'll look at what your cravings mean, why you're stuck and how to get unstuck and what your plan of action is to experience a total transformation. So in, in, invest 45 minutes of your time and I guarantee you'll walk away with at least one major aha about how to break out of the rut and, and get into action. So I want to invite you to open up the possibility that this time can really be different, that you haven't tried everything yet, that even those of you who are relatively healthy already might be missing something that could make it all better. So this is an opportunity to get curious about how healthy you can be. Um, this is Gareth, uh, one of my clients, and I'll just read to you um, one of his testimony about uh, the program that he went through with me. So these are his words. Um, Upon starting the 90-day total transformation program, 
I was excited, but also doubtful. And this was not because of my lack of belief in the program or yourself, but more my lack of confidence in myself to follow through. Each week, uh, I get given action steps, which are really not challenging or extremely time consuming. But if you have bad time management, as I do, little gets done. Fortunately, you, Clint Grove, are a good motivator. And if life was not so energy and time demanding, I would be glad to indulge in daily, daily sessions with you. LOL. So we only met once a week, but he wanted to meet up every day. <laughs> so outcomes from our weekly sessions that have made the most difference in my life so far. The meditation or getting into a relaxed state before mealtime. This is now not only something I do before mealtime, but in other areas too, because I've tried to make it a habit before commencing with anything that requires my undivided mental attention. I've grown to love being in a calm state of mind because I now understand that when my mind is calm, in a calm state, my body tends to function better. Exercising. Although um, I would have always consider myself an active gym guy. My only exercise would have been in the gym with heavy weights. And now I'm a lot more appreciative of <clears throat> body weight exercises and home <clears throat> core activities. <clears throat> Food intake. <clears throat> I'm ever so grateful for the knowledge and understanding I've gained so far when it comes to what I eat and how I eat my food. This is info I might not have come across in my current day. So I'm, I'm pleased that I have this have this to implement in my life now and not later. Self-love and appreciation. This is possibly the hardest action step I had to follow, probably due to lifelong misled beliefs. But I feel myself slowly getting to grips with embracing self-love. I look forward to continuing to learn how to humbly love myself so that I can become the person I have forever desired to be. I'm happy that I'm gaining more than just body health improvements as I've been seeing results in my mental well-being, which is most crucial to me above all. Thank you kindly, Clint Grove. So that was Gareth um, who went through the total transformation body, total body transformation program with me. So what makes this program so unique is that we focus on what you get to have rather than what you don't. So suffering to heal doesn't make sense. When I work with you, I want to inspire you to reclaim your health in a way that is sustainable, natural, and fun. I mean, my clients tell me that I'm part cheerleader, part tough love coach. Support and accountability, two ingredients proven to make all the difference in the world between staying stuck and breaking out of a rut. So we're just going to do this. Um, if you're ready for the accountability, the systems and the support that's going to make this work like nothing else you've ever tried. Then I invite you to a free, so this is free, no, no strings attached, initial total body transformation breakthrough session. It's a 45 minute private consultation with me where you'll, we'll look at what your cravings mean, why you're stuck and how to get unstuck, what your plan of action is to experience a total transformation, and I guarantee you that you'll walk away with at least one major aha about how to break out of a rut and get into action. All right. So here's what to do now. You'll see on the screen, um, there's a, a call to action there. I want you guys to click on that button where it says book. Um, and then I'll take you through to my calendar where you can book a time that is convenient for you uh, for a session with me. And we'll, and we'll run through that. And so once you've booked a time there, there'll be a link on the confirmation page to get the seven solutions to uh, blood sugar, uh, sorry, the, the, the sugar habit, seven solutions to, to get out of the habit of sugar cravings. And so if you click on that now, uh, that'll take you to the, to the calendar and you can book a time next week or the week after. I'll be so glad to hear from you guys and to take you through that as a, a private consultation where you'll definitely get something out of it. And I've taken many people through it and even if it's just that one session, which is the free coaching session, people have really uh, enjoyed it and taken something from that. So I want to thank all of you for being here on how to kick the sugar habit uh, webinar, how to kick the sugar habit. I hope you guys have learned something today and I hope that it's inspired you to take it further and, uh, and see what you could actually um, make of this in your health journey. So. Thanks a lot, and I'm just going to say goodbye.
Thanks to everyone. Thanks, Kurt. So thanks, Andrea, Travis, David, for attending, and Vanessa. I appreciate it so much. Signing out. <laughs>